Hi, this is Alex from Phuket Pulse. Welcome to another GED Science screencast on test questions and this is episode 7. Um, today will be a short screencast on only two questions with um, the same material. I hope I can help you with these screencasts to pass your GED Science test and to understand some concepts and um, uh, yeah, approaches uh, to questions better. If you find these screencasts helpful in any way, please hit the subscribe button below. It really helps us to help more people like you. Okay, let's get started. Um, this question is on key vocabulary and reading graphs very carefully. So let's have a look at the question paragraph and graph first. Varicella is a virus that causes the disease chickenpox. Medications are used to treat the symptoms of fever and discomfort associated with chickenpox. In 1995, a varicella vaccine was made available to people in the United States. The graph shows the number of chickenpox cases reported in four U.S. states from 1991 to 2007. If we have a look at the graph, as it says up here, it shows chickenpox cases in four U.S. states from 1991 to 2007. On the y-axis, we see the number of reported cases, and on the x-axis, we see the years, 91 to 2007. And what we can see on the graph is that we start off up here, fluctuates a little bit until 95, and then the number of chicken pox gradually decreases until 2003 and then stays at a minimum until 2007 with slight fluctuations. So let's have a look at the question. What conclusion is supported by the data in the graph? A, the varicella vaccine reliefs chickenpox symptoms, B, the varicella vaccine is effective in treating chickenpox, C, the varicella vaccine is effective in preventing chickenpox, the varicella vaccine has eliminated chickenpox from the United States. So the differences in these four possible answers are answer A talks about relieves symptoms, answer B treating chickenpox, C, preventing chickenpox, and D, we have eliminated chickenpox from the US. So answer A and B are relatively similar. They talk about relief of symptoms and treating chickenpox. So that means people that have chickenpox receiving medication to get rid of the chickenpox, to relieve the symptoms, to fight the fever, and so on. But that is not what the graph shows us. The graph shows us only the number of people that got chickenpox, not how they were treated. And the number of chickenpox decreased in our time period. So that means that less people in the US from 95 until 2007, less and less people got chickenpox. Why? Because they received the vaccine. More and more people were vaccinated against chickenpox. More and less and less people got the chickenpox. That means that the varicella vaccine is effective in preventing chickenpox. What means to prevent? We have this down here. To keep something from happening or arising. So people do not get chickenpox when they are vaccinated. Did, just to make sure, check answer D, were the chickenpox eliminated from the United States? No, they were not. Still in 2007, we still have a certain number of people that did get the chickenpox. Eliminated means it's not there anymore. To be eliminated, our graph would have to go down to zero and then stay at zero. That would mean eliminated. So the correct answer here is C, prevent chickenpox. Why? Because the number of people that got chickenpox decreased. All right, 
what will help you a lot here in answering this question is if you know what a vaccine is. And I put the definition here for you. A vaccine is a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against one or several diseases prepared from the causative agent of a disease's product, its products or a synthetic substitute treated to act as an antigen without inducing the disease. That is a quite complex definition. How do we understand that an antigen is basically a fingerprint of the pathogen of the virus? Your body is able to recognize these fingerprints. And if it recognizes the disease the very first time, if you get chickenpox, your body will produce antibodies to fight the disease and your body will as well remember the fingerprint of that virus. And if it comes again, your body knows it, will produce antibodies quickly and kill it off before it actually can cause the disease. So vaccines are something amazing because these vaccines give your body the fingerprint without making you sick. And your body is able to save that information. It will produce antibodies and it will produce uh, certain cells that save this information of the antigen, of the fingerprint. And if the real virus invades your body, you won't even know it because your body reacts and prevents you from getting sick. You got active immunity provided by the vaccine. So pretty amaz amazing discoveries, these vaccines. Let's have a look at the next question, which focuses even more on the graph. How many cases of chickenpox were reported in 1996 in all 50 US states? 60, 6,000, 60,000, or D, not enough information is given. So to answer this one correctly, we have to be very careful. And try yourself, give you a few seconds, can pause the video as well, otherwise we will continue now. So your first intuition may be if you look very quickly on the graph. You check, okay, our year is 96, where is 96 here, how many cases, Bob, 60. Answer A, wrong. Why? Okay. Some of you might think, I knew that it's wrong because it says on the y-axis number of reported cases in thousands. That means we don't have 60 reported cases, but 60,000 reported cases. If you got that, then you might have answered with C. I have to disappoint you here, C is still not correct. Why? We have to look at the title. The graph shows us the number of chickenpox cases in four US states. The question asks for reported chickenpox cases in all 50 US states. That means that we do not have enough information given in this question or from this graph to answer. The question. So whenever you have a question that is related to a graph, interpreting a graph, finding a specific value in the graph, make sure that you have carefully checked what does the question want from me and that you carefully check first the title of the graph. What does the graph actually show? Second, check the axis. Check the units of the axis. What are the units of the axis? What are the units of my answers? And third, check the values of your graph, check the trend of your graph, what's happening in over this time period in this case. All right, that's it from me. I hope I could help you to prepare for your GED test in science and uh, I hope it's a bit more clear now for you 
how to actually read graphs correctly. And I thank you for joining me today. And yep, that's it. I hope to see you next time. Have a great day.